This image of a solar eclipse taken on May 29th, 1919 was the first observational proof of Einstein's general theory of relativity, and it pretty much instantly propelled him to fame. Ole Isaac Newton mathematically described how gravity works in Principia. That dropped in 1687, a full 228 years before general relativity was dropped in 1915. Newtonian physics holds that massive objects like stars and planetary bodies are attracted to each other with a force called gravity, and that force of attraction holds them together in orbit. Einstein was like, that's cute. It's actually because matter bends the fabric of fourth dimensional space-time, lol. But anyway, World War I was going on, so it's not like many people outside of Germany were going to be able to hear what Einstein was saying in the first place, let alone understand it or agree with it. But the Dutch were neutral, and a Dutch physicist named Willem de Sutter sent Einstein's paper to the Royal Astronomical Society in Britain. And the secretary of the Royal Astronomical Society, Arthur Eddington, was one of the first people to actually read the paper and understand it. And because he was a pacifist Quaker, he was one of the only few members of the society that was willing to pursue a theory written by a German. So he got together with another British astronomer and set up an expedition for them to go get some pictures of eclipses. Both Newtonian physics and general relativity predict that light that moves around an object as massive as the sun would bend the light as it moves around it, just re general relativity predicts it'll move about twice as much. So you should be able to see stars that are actually behind the sun, but you normally can't because the sun is too damn bright to see any other stars at all. No, what you need is you need the moon to block the light of the sun. You need a solar eclipse. And this 1919 eclipse was going to be a good one. It was going to last seven whole minutes, longer than any other eclipse in 500 years. It was going to be centered in a bright group of stars called the Hyades, so there should be a bunch of visible stars during totality. The two teams were assembled and they took these big ass telescopes to two different spots in the path of totality. Arthur Eddington went with some homies from Cambridge to the West African island Principe, and another team from the Greenwich Observatory in London went to a Brazilian town, Sobadal. They sent out two expeditions in case one of them had equipment errors or it was overcast in one of the places. Both expeditions were lucky to get images of the solar eclipse put on plates, but only one copy of the plates remains today. And when they got home, they used precision instruments to measure the apparent change in stars' positions. And what do you know, the stars' apparent change in position was more closely aligned with Einstein's predictions. Almost every major news publication ran the story on the front page, and Einstein became an international celebrity practically overnight, and our understanding of physics changed forever.